Hey everybody, this is Kip Winger and I'm here with my good friend and mentor, Steve <laughs> Vai. Everybody's mentor actually in the world. <laughs> and uh, I'm, we're here at his studio. He was nice enough to let me come here and uh, talk to him about a lot of things. I've, I've seen a lot of interviews on you, so I have a lot really? of questions okay. that have never been asked. Uh -huh. So <laughs> Steve and I have emailed back and forth our classical music, and that's yeah. my relationship mostly with Steve. For those of you that don't know Steve beyond his virtuoso guitar playing, he's a monstrous composer, and so we're going to get into a little bit of that today as well. So thanks for letting me come here. Well, I thank you, and I, and I have to tell you, that there was nothing more uh, delightful for me about your career than to see you expand it with your passion for Thank composition. You. And not only that, I mean, when I started hearing the stuff you were, you were composing, it was just r so well written. I mean, you got the, all those emails are sincere. I mean, you're really sounding great. I appreciate that. And it's so nice to see how it's going like this for you. Thank you. So you've been composing music from a pretty early age, or way earlier than me. Like, I started with piano, the same as you. And you said you played the accordion. I played the accordion, and yeah. Stuff like that, but you actually, took on writing a piece in high school, right? Mm -hmm. I guess if I was to kind of outline the, the, the parallel universes of rock music and classical music, compositional music, right. uh, in my life, it would maybe sound something like this. I think I was, I was, it was on my sixth birthday and my mom got me a little spinet organ. I remember hitting a note and I, I recognized that to the right, the notes go higher and to the left, they go lower. And it, it was right at that moment, I, I had this sort of epiphany. At that moment, there was two thoughts that came to me as sort of like downloads. Yeah. And one of them was, this is music. This is, so I could see music knowing that, oh, I see, this is how it works. And oh, that's, that's music. Right. The little dot here means that. And it was an instant recognition of, ah, oh, it's what, co oh, composite. And then I just felt instinctually, it was an instinctual feeling that the creation of music was infinite and you have all of these colors and things at your disposal. You can do anything you want. Fast forward. Yeah. Because you said a key thing and that's the way I do it. You said you saw it. Yeah. So when I come up with the idea for a piece, oftentimes I'll see the whole piece. Yep. So fast forward to you composing now or a year yeah. ago or what you might compose in the future. Yeah. Do you see the music? Are you Absolutely. hear the music? How does it appear to you? It appears as a concept. So for instance, I was commissioned to write a piece for a Stravinsky festival in Holland and they wanted me to play guitar. Now I had previously composed Expanding the Universe, which is heavy guitar orchestra, wild, intense, noisy, beautiful. You don't have a score. Oh, you do. I okay. do, yeah. yeah. Right okay. here, folks. Yeah. Here's the music, <laughs> right here. Um, and it's an, an amazing piece, but carry on. I don't want to interrupt you. So then they wanted another one, and I, I didn't have much time. And you know that composing 20 minutes of 80-piece orchestra music or whatever, it's time-consuming. Very. It, especially, I, was, I do everything by hand. So. I was on tour and, well, I was scheduling a tour and I had to carve out five months to compose a piece of music. Now, I didn't know what that piece of music was going to be, but I, I sent out a recipe to the universe, meaning myself, <laughs> and I said, okay, what do I want in this piece? I said, well, I, wanted, I need an easy guitar part because I don't have time to write at one of these like expanding the universe and then learn it you know this is like you know and and compose right so i said i want an easy guitar part i want something that's unique and brilliant for me yeah you know and you're allowed to ask these things that you know absolutely because i want something that's brilliant for me i want something that i've never done before i want something i've never heard before so that's a tall order but it, it, to believe that it's not possible is like saying the universe is limited, you know? So I know that it's possible. It's possible for everybody. Now, in the beginning, there can be a feeling of, I'm not worthy to ask for these things. And this is a lie. This is the exact 
area that I wanted to talk to you about yeah. uh, in, in part of this because you used the phrase, I threw it out to the universe. Yeah, I, I put in a request. Out. I right. put the request. I think that's a key thing that no, not many people are talking about. People do it. They do it. You're doing it all the time, but a lot of times you're getting back stuff you don't want because your request is for painful shit. Exactly. You know, we don't know we're doing that. Right. Every time you worry, blame, are in fear, that's what you're sending out and that's what you're getting more of. <laughs> it's very interesting because I use the term I cast my net out into the universe, and, yeah. but you added the word recipe, and I think that's very, very key ingredient to what's going to come back to you, especially when you're thinking about writing a piece of music. Yeah. So. Well, the, the interesting thing that happened is I wrote all these parameters, the, the recipe. I did not have any idea for the piece or what it was going to be. I, I, I just knew that if... I knew what I wanted, and there was no obstructions. Like there wasn't, I want this, but I can't have it because right. that's, that's, that's what blocks it, you know? So I may talk about my music passionately. An artist should feel that way about Dig their it. music. Absolutely. It doesn't mean that everybody's going to like it or everybody should like it or that the artist feels that because it's important to them, everybody needs to know how great they are. This is all for you, you know, and uh, you have the right to do things for you. <laughs> you know, this is what. Amen. And if you can't do that, you're not helping anybody else, really, you know. So probably about a week after that, I was getting in my car. All right, and I, I took my key out, and I put the key in the door of the car, and the entire piece of music for the still small voice, not the notes, the whole concept was just like you had said before, it, it comes as a vision. Right. It was a download, and it was so uh, compelling to me that I actually got weak in my knees and like had to hold on to the car because it, it was so exciting. And it was, you're going to write a piece of music where you hold one note for 17 minutes and you're not allowed to move. And the whole orchestra is going to come in and dance around that note through the whole piece. And to me, which is what matters, it was a cool idea. It's a really cool so idea. So the, the other thing that I thought was really cool about it was it was the second movement of the middle of everywhere, which was a, another, a piece of music that was built around another concept of non-rhythmic counterpoint. I don't know if you noticed that in the piece. I totally know. Yeah, well, yeah. you wrote that in your notes, and also I, I can see it in the score. Yeah, yeah, so that, if you listen to the score, it's, 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 it's rough because it's very rigid. I mean, can you imagine writing a piece of music when at no time is one note longer than the other? Yeah, quite the challenge. He yeah, did so it well. He did it well. It was tough, you know, but it was fun. But then when the still small voice comes in, there's those three notes. It goes ba da be, and that's an F, and I just hold that for 17 minutes. And then the orchestra starts to come in, and it's the first time you start hearing notes separating into rhythmic counterpoint, you know, and then it turns into a piece of music. But the cool thing about that piece, if you listen to it and you give all your attention, you put your focus on that note that I'm holding through the whole piece, it's, it's really uh, interesting how it changes colors based on what surrounds it. You're a great orchestrator. That's, the, that's another thing I wanted to, to mention. Um, and I will say that I know that the concept is what is holding the piece together, but the piece would be a great piece without the note. Right. And I don't know yeah. if you ever heard it like that. I was like, wow, this music is great, even without... Without the one note, yeah. Without the concept. Thank you, thank with, you. Well, you know, that uh, sometimes I like setting up parameters 
to work around. I think that's very important because when you yeah. don't have them, you just go off into oblivion, and there's no you can you can't have any structure of any kind. It's just like meandering into the never never land. Yeah. Is there a basis of your harmonic language? Well, let's say your stuff with an electric band versus yeah. your orchestral music, and there is a thread there. And I'm wondering when you're working with harmonies, because I know you work directly into, say, finale, or you write by hand. You're not really working much at the piano, are you? Or uh, yeah, I have. I don't have it here now, but I have a little keyboard. So you reference you reference notes and stuff. Occasionally, what I'll do is I'll find chords, mm -hmm. you know, that and identify their density and then if you have one chord you have everything in a sense you know if you if you wanted to s stay within the mode of right. that kind of uh, tonality where right. you've, you're creating something that makes theoretical sense you know you or lack thereof yeah yeah well you can build like a, a nine note chord right. with no doublings right and that will speak the melody it'll offer the notes for the melody so then i'll listen to the chord now the the theory is all fine it's there if i need it but more importantly is the the investment that you have in the listening listening to something you're playing whether it's one chord that's creating an atmosphere or tonality i mean that that can turn into anything or if it's listening in your head, and I can, and this is what I do most often. Usually, every night when I go to bed, <laughs> it's a great thing to do. Uh, I, I still my mind, you know, and then I listen, and I don't believe I know what what I'm going to do. You're listening. To I'm listening in my mind. Got it. To yeah. non-restraint, complete utter freedom, no particular. Uh, limitations on orchestration or anything. So everything in the universe is fair game to create something. And it's there. It's there in everybody. You just have to shut up, you know? And then they just, the melodies just appear and you can follow them and you can work with them. And, and the theoretical mind will say, okay, I know how to put that on paper. That That's this tone. But that's not what I'm using as my reference for construction. Do you know what I mean? Yes. It's the tools that can explain things, but they can never explain the feeling. You this, know? Is, this is the exact epicenter of what I'm curious about Steve Vai. Uh, <laughs> because you can do theory all, all day long. All day long, and you can come up with all this stuff, but the thing is is that your voice comes from that place and so I'm really curious how because after listening to a lot of your music and absorbing it in the way that I have I feel like okay this guy's hearing a very specific thing I mean you really have a voice very rare when you say you, you still your mind and you follow that thing and that's very hard to clear your mind for one thing it's, for, it's hard for me to clear my mind and lay down because I do the same thing that you're talking about now that you're saying it I'm going to take your advice and do it yeah. every single night because I think it, oh, it's fantastic the value of that is that you know the sky becomes the limit then right absolutely and it's very it's very easy to interrupt yourself the moment you start trying to think oh I know how to do that you lose it do you know what right. I mean any thought disrupts it. It's just clear, opening, listening. You don't own anything. You don't rule anything. There's no, you know, you're just there. And then it just, it's, it's freaky. So you're hearing this thing and you go, and you're saying, oh yeah, I can write this down. Maybe you are, maybe you aren't. But when you can you, write down anything. Right. But when you get to that point. Yeah. Oh no, all that stuff's gone. I can't remember. You know, it's like, it's too wild. That's what I was wondering. Yeah, no. It serves a purpose in exercising or expanding mm. the place that you go when you are sitting to compose. Because you're expanding your own universe, you know what I mean? Right. You're, you're, so you, you're creating more real estate in your toolbox of ideas. You, might, you don't have to remember that stuff. It's not going to go anywhere. 
you know, <laughs> it's there. I wonder because, you know... It reshapes itself. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. It's never, never repeats itself in that. Have you ever dreamt a tune and then wrote it uh, pretty verbatim? I mean, uh, not verbatim, but uh, I've dreamt. I've uh, in, in my earlier years, um, I used to study dreams. I was into all that kind of metaphysical stuff mm -hmm. and uh, write them down and try to astral project and all right, this stuff. Yeah. I had a friend that, that it used to happen to him every night. Um, I could never really do it though. I had some pretty freaky things happen, and some of the dreams were really very vivid. And I started documenting them and some of the sounds. And that's what Passion and Warfare, my record Passion and yeah. Warfare, was based on. Each song was based on something that I had discovered in one of these vivid dream states. Oh, cool. <clears throat> yeah. For, so, for instance, there's a song called Erotic Nightmares, where the guitar does this everything in that middle section I heard and the guitar does I saw myself do this in a dream you know 30 40 years ago I picked up the guitar and I was blowing into the body and fingering notes and holding certain it was a dream so you, you know it's we, all weird shit happens yeah, and this flute like sound was coming out and I'm like in the dream I said I know how to do that so it's easy, you know, you use a volume control, you use this tonal pickup, that distortion cool. here, and then you, the bar goes like this, and the notes go like that. It was impossible to do it the way I was doing it in the yeah, dream, yeah. but I got the sound, and that's in there, you can hear it. Is, is your guitar playing a extension of your composition, or is it, is it, do you feel like it's a separate entity? Like, for example, when you're composing a piece of classical music, is part of you relating to it as an instrumentalist, or, or is it is it complete clean slate where you're a, a different composer? Does one feed the other, or how do you kind of move yeah. back and forth between the That's two? That's a good question. I will say that um, oil and smoke. Yeah, I w oil of smoke. Yeah. This piece to me is the best representation that yeah, I've ever heard probably. of of anybody. Oh putting a rock band in the middle of an orchestra piece. Uh, I've never heard it done this well. Oh, thank you, yeah. thank you. So that begged the question for me, are the two people that you are the same, one and the same, and how do you, how do you relate to that? Well, yourself. I guess it, it's that's a good question, and I've I never really give it I've never really given it much thought because I usually adjust to the situation. Like if I'm sitting in with the band and I, I'm if I have a guitar on and I'm improvising, there's a compositional element to that. Right. It's changed through the years. At one point, when you're a developing musician, at least for me, it was all about okay, these scales work. You know, and I can play this scale, and I've practiced it so much, boy, I can play it fast, you know. But that, as you know, gets, gets tired. Right. You become um, just a machine, right. you know. And it wears thin on you, no matter who you are. But melody never wears thin. Right. And it's yeah. infinite. Yeah. Yeah, so it, there's, there's times in my earlier days where melody occasionally would just come out and I never really recognized it. Usually it was, this is the blues scale, it's gotta work. <laughs> you know? right. But then as I, you know, that was when I was a kid, teenager, and then as things progressed and my interest in uh, compositional music improved, the compositional music or the rock music, they, are, they serve a purpose, do you know what I mean? Mm. And that purpose is, what are you hearing? You know, so that's when the best stuff I find for me comes out is when I, I just shut up, you know, and I listen. And then it just comes as downloads. You, you know, people yeah. do this. Yeah, uh, anybody that's inspired in the moment of inspiration, that's what you're doing. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And, and, and you, you back out, you get out of the way. And uh, when, I'm, when I don't get out of the way, um, then I'm, I'm intellectualizing what I'm doing or I'm uh, exercising my hand memory. And I do that too. I'm not 
an inspired person all the time, you know? It's, it's impossible to be. The inspiration yeah. is so fleeting because you'll, you'll get the inspiration, it'll hit you like a lightning bolt and then, and then you're just trying to grab the intangible and it's yes. like, wait, come back, yeah. come back, come back. It's the memory of that lightning bolt that hit you. Yes. I mean, you can never hold it. Yeah. That's why I was really curious to talk to you because you're so prolific too. I mean, you've got a huge body of work. Yeah, it's, it's spread out. You know, it's like X amount of studio records, composition stuff, record company guy, you know, it's, it's all kind of diversified. If I only made records and toured, I'd have a lot more records. The quality is very high level from the beginning, which is also, uh, it's not like, oh yeah, he was, he was doing Johnny Be Good right here and now he's doing the right, right. of Spring. I mean, you, <laughs> yeah. were, you were very highly developed early on. We're influenced by the music that our parents bring to the house. So my parents were, they brought home West Side Story and that was it for me. That was the first Huge. awakening of musically. And it was drama. I mean, my, I'm a ham, you know, I love performing. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Have, I make funny faces, I wear funny clothes, and I just enjoy that. I'm not, not going to make any excuses for it, you know, but... That's an interesting question, because do you think, the, are there any misconceptions of Steve Vai out there that you would correct? Well, I don't think there's any misconceptions, because uh, like, like anything else, people see things differently. Everybody has a different perspective, and they believe their perspective. Right. So for somebody to say, you know, Steve Vai is, is a wanker, what, you know, whatever they say, just no heart, mm -hmm. you know, I, I see stuff like that. Uh, I used to, I don't see any of that anymore. You know, everything from that to one of the greatest gifts th th that is undiscovered, you know? So it, like you, it spans the gamut. Yeah. So after a while, you just, you, just, you don't pay any attention to yeah, it. Right. You, you can't, it's nice, some of it's constructive, some of it's just downright misleading it's wrong it's mistaken premises which is fine um i don't see enough stuff written about me that's wrong that i feel like there's anything to correct yeah well that's good that's yeah. great i have one question i'd like to ask you about frank zappa and it's not about frank zappa or you and frank zappa i'm quite curious to know who you think you might be had frank zappa not been in your oh. life well, that's a tough one because after that West Side Story experience, my sister was listening to like Led Zeppelin, and that was it. You know, that's that's when the whole guitar thing came in. But nothing was really pushing my buttons in time. I mean, yes, Led Zeppelin, but they, it didn't satisfy, and, and of course all the Deep Purple and all, all that '70s stuff. But it didn't satisfy my compositional it wasn't going urge. far enough yeah. it wasn't yeah I what you can't you don't compose that stuff right so then all of a sudden I heard Frank Zappa's music and that was a stunner because it had everything in it that no one else was doing that I was looking for right. it had composition like intense composition yeah. it had rock band compositional elements it was free it was funny it had comedy it had wicked guitar playing you know it had rock sensibilities blues so Frank was sort of like this, you know, go-to. And the melodies he wrote, oh my God, you know, they're so beautiful. How I ended up in his band was just, ah, that was wild. Like, to this day, I look back and I, I, it's like, you know, did, did all that really happen? Yeah, you that's know? cool. So for Frank not to have been in my life on a personal level? Anything, musically, like, like just take the Frank Zappa component out of Steve Vai. Oh, geez, that's a tough one. I, I, that's a real hard one. Yeah, I would have probably me. been looking. There would, there's nobody else that could replace I his get it. offering, you know? You're very, um, it's, it's obvious that, that you're somewhat influenced by him. Yeah. I just think that there's a voice in your music that resonates more with me personally. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I was thinking, wow, this is interesting. I wonder who he would be without Frank Zappa, like, which would take me to this next question. Like, who are your... Because I have a lot of composers sitting on my shoulder yeah. going, you know, try this or, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. that's not good enough. I'm kind of curious, who are the shadow composers yeah. that, you're, that, that influence you when you're, when you're composing?